Hello, I'm Giles Darling and I write novels, plays and non-fiction books. In this video I continue to talk about book cover design, particularly if you intend to publish paperback books or ebooks on websites like Amazon. The advice in this video is based on my own experience and I use the covers of my own books as examples. So let's discuss what to include on the spine and on the back cover. The spine should include at least your book's title and your name or pen name. If there's enough space, you could also include the book's secondary title. To differentiate between the primary and secondary titles and your name or your pen name, you could use different fonts, colours, text styles, or a mix of uppercase, lowercase, or title case lettering. In the UK, the text on a book's spine traditionally reads from the top of the spine down to the bottom of the spine. In other countries, such as France, the text on the spine is usually written from bottom to top. It's up to you which way you show the text. Again, if there's enough space, you might also include a logo at the bottom of the spine. This makes the book appear more professional or less amateur, in my opinion. The less adorned the logo is, such as a simple shape and only one or two colours, the better it can look. You can get inspiration by looking at the logos on existing book spines, but take care not to plagiarise corporate logos, particularly of existing publishing companies. The one time I included a logo on the spine of one of my books, the logo related to the topic of the story, in this case a ravenous sugar cube. I haven't included logos on the spines of my other books because there wasn't enough space. The main element on the back cover of the book is the text summarising the contents of your book. This is often referred to as the blurb. In my experience, the blurb is traditionally three paragraphs. The first paragraph sets the scene. This includes the time period and location if the novel is not set in the present day or if it takes place somewhere specific. The paragraph also introduces the central character and why the story is happening, i.e. what sets it in motion. The second paragraph hints at what the central character does to solve the initial challenge and how this leads to more problems. The third paragraph asks questions about how the story will unfold. Hopefully these questions echo what the person reading the blurb is thinking. The third paragraph typically ends with a find out in this dot 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 sentence that can indirectly describe the book's genre or type of story. I've already mentioned one-line reviews or quotations in my previous video and how I prefer to place them on the back cover, typically after or below the blurb. Like the image on the front cover, these reviews or quotations serve to grab the potential reader's attention. They can give a flavour of the novel's contents, for example describing how someone might feel on reading the novel, or likening the book to well-known films or movies. The one-line reviews should always be positive and truthful, otherwise readers might be prompted to leave negative online reviews about your book. On my book covers, the reviews and quotations are unattributed because they are either fictitious or adapted from feedback I received from colleagues, friends and family who kindly proofread my books for me. If you do manage to get attributed one-line reviews and quotations, maybe from a writing group that you attend, don't forget to ask for permission to include their name or organisation on your book cover. You might consider including an author photograph and a mini biography. These can help stimulate a potential reader's interest in your book particularly if you're an unknown author. I've used the same photo on my own book covers over the years to maintain continuity even though I've recently been losing hair in real life. I think using different photos showing me getting older on each new book that I publish would simply create unnecessary confusion. The mini biography should be based on the biography on your website's publishing page. For me that's my author's page on Amazon. The contents of the mini-biography should be adapted for the type of book that you're publishing. For example, the mini-biography on my novels 
focuses on how I develop the characters in my stories, while the mini-biography for my non-fiction books focuses on other aspects of my knowledge or experience. I also nowadays include a trigger warning on the back cover of my novels. It specifies whether the book contains any sexual references or swear words, and also to what scale or level. Similarly, if your book contains violence, you might wish to advise about this and its extent too. You can also include a catch-all phrase in the trigger warning in case your story contains some actions, such as kidnapping or extortion, or ideas such as slavery or religion, that some readers could find upsetting. You might think that a trigger warning is over the top. However, as a small-scale author without the support of a publishing company behind me, I hope that this short paragraph on the back cover of my novels can offer some level of protection, should a reader of one of my books take offence and decide to act against me. After all, the internet makes my books available to potential readers all around the world. These people can have belief systems or levels of tolerance that could be very different from mine or from the society where I live. Finally, don't forget to leave space for the barcode. If you're publishing using Amazon, it sets out clear guidance about where the barcode will go. Thank you for watching this video. Do you have any further tips for book cover design? If so, please feel free to leave your comments below. If I get many, I might even make a further follow-up video. Please also check out the rest of my YouTube channel, especially where I discuss the various books that I've written. I hope my channel encourages you to buy my books and to read them, if you haven't already done so. Finally, please feel free to like and subscribe this video and my YouTube channel. Bye-bye.